All right, I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite subjects uh, to talk that I used to talk about with my uh, high school classes, big numbers. And in this, video we're going to talk about the Ackermann function. Uh, but first, uh, what's the biggest number that you've heard of? Well, a certain uh, internet company has popularized uh, this number. Right, this number uh, is called a Google. All right, And uh, to give you the sense of a Google, um, think of how many molecules there are in a balloon full of air. Right? If you know anything about chemistry or physics, you know there's a, a whole lot. In fact, you might know that uh, there's approximately 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, a mole. Uh, units, a mole. So let's see how many moles are in a Google. There are um, one uh, mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd and uh, units and there are 10 to the 100 units in a Google alright well uh, that gives us pull a 10 out 10 over 6.022 at times 10 to the and subtract and we've pulled the 10 out so 99 minus 23 is 76 there's that many moles in a Google that's a lot that's a lot a lot All right. so a mole doesn't even touch a Google another very large number is 10 raised to the Google power. That's what you call a Googleplex. Right. And that very, very big number. And uh, a lot of people uh, know about these numbers. The Ackermann function is a function that grows and grows so that uh, its outputs become larger than a Googleplex fairly quickly. Uh, the Ackermann function is recursively defined and it has two inputs called arguments, two arguments, and the input to a function is called an argument. And this is um, n plus 1 if m is equal to 0. It is the Ackermann function uh, m minus 1, 1 if m is greater than 0 but n is equal to 0 and otherwise it's the Ackermann function m minus 1 and the Ackermann function m n minus 1 alright these uh, arguments that are used in the recursion are all going down right the m minus 1 the m minus 1 the n minus 1 so we don't get caught in a loop we are going to cycle back and we can get an answer for any input uh, m and n. Since uh, the Ackermann function takes two uh, inputs, we can make a uh, table of inputs. Let's put the uh, m down here and the n here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, we're not going to get very far in this. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's probably about as far as we're going to get anything. Alright. Now, what is the Ackermann function when we have 0, 0 input? Well, m is 0, so we use the first, uh, first definition there, and so the Ackermann function gives out a 1. Well, uh, 0, 1 m is 0 as well, so the Ackermann function is n plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So far, so good. Not bad. Now, whenever you have an n is equal to 0, you go up one row, m minus 1, and the first uh, column after the 0. So all these 
go down here in the Ackman function. Two. Now, uh, Ackman one one. A one one. That's equal to a zero a one zero. Okay, what's a one zero? A one zero is two. So this is a zero two. And in fact, we can think of uh, out here in the Ackermann function, the directions for finding the next number are to go back to the previous number in your row and go to that space, that in, and look down and find the result from the previous row. So 2 gives us 3, 3 gives us 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. Not bad so far. 3. Now we go to 3 from the previous row. 5. Now we go to 5 from the previous row. 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17. And in general, this is uh, 2 uh, in um, plus 3. Okay, five, put 5 down here. Now, 5, uh, that's 13. 13, twice 13 plus 3 is 29. All right, 26, 27, 28, 29. Uh, twice 29, uh, well, twice 30 is 60, plus 3 is 61, minus 2 plus 3. Uh, twice 61, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 5. 1, 2, 5 is 250, 2, 5, 3, 2, 50, 506, 509, uh, 1,000, 18, 19, 1,021, and so on. Put a 13 here. Oh my gosh. we got to go all the way over to 13 and then down. Well, we need some estimate for what this is. Uh, it looks to me, since we're doubling each time, that a good way to model the growth of this is to say each number is approximately 2 to the n plus 2. All right? That gives us a 4 instead of a 5 here. 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512. Yeah, not quite right, but I think it models the growth approximately. All right, so 2 to the 15. All right, there we go. And then 2 to the 2 to the 15, 2 to the 2 to the 2 to the 15, and so on. We get these power towers going up, uh, expanding each time we go across this row. And so here we have 2 to the 15, and we've got to go all the way over. And so this is 2 raised to the 2, raised to the 2, raised to the 2, uh, and there are, to the 15, 2 to the 15th of these 2's in the power tower, which gives us um, the Ackermann function 5, 1. So the Ackermann function grows very fast for inputs. All right, uh, in another video, I'm going to talk about the largest number uh, that has ever been used in mathematics uh, and the problem in which it was used. And then I've also been doing uh, some work on the problem uh, in which Graham's number showed up. And while it's not original, I'd like to present it because uh, I think it's pretty cool. All right, you have a good day.